for our next conversation, I'll turn things over to my colleague at Fortune, senior editor Jennifer Reingold, and her guest, the founder and CEO of Nest, Tony Fidel. Well, I am here um, with somebody that may or may not need much introduction. If I call him the pod father, I think you'll know who I have here. <laughs> this is Tony Fidel. Um, he invented the iPod and uh, was it 18 generations that you worked on? 18 generations, yeah. Uh, and three generations of the iPhone. Correct. So I guess you've created a lot of e-waste in your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in a way I have. But it, uh, people really enjoyed using them. That is true. That is true. <laughs> There's a lot of things that people make that end up in desk drawers. That, you know. <laughs> but we will get to that in the recycling session. <laughs> um, so you left in 2008, and you went, took your amazing design skills and this thrilling, exciting company that you'd worked for, and you went to invent something even more exciting and sexy. You <laughs> reinvented the thermostat. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so why the thermostat? Well. Well, literally, I was, you know, right before the iPhone shipped, I decided that uh, we were going to build a home for our family in Lake Tahoe. And I wanted to, I, I knew that the iPhone was coming, and I thought there was going to be a dramatic shift in the way people lived their lives at home. When you had the interface to your life in your hand at all times, how would your home change? And at the same time, we had more and more green uh, awareness coming in, into play. So now if you have the interface to your home with you at all times, and all of the products inside your home now being powered by basically by a battery, not this infinite source of electrons, how would those products change? And the first one that hit me was the thermostat um, during that design. And, and through that, it wasn't just a great product, it was also a great business. And I said, this seems like I have to take this on. Mm -hmm. And it's been, what, three years since inception, and how many months since you actually launched? So, so it's three years uh, next week and, uh, since we started the company, about 18 months, just going on 18 months for uh, shipping in the marketplace. And I can't believe the traction we've already seen. You know, we are now in over 3,000 retail doors in the US. We just started with three retail doors at Nest.com. We're at Apple, we're in all Apple retail, which is absolutely phenomenal. No strings were pulled yeah. at all. <laughs> no connection. <laughs> but uh, so that's been great. And the other thing that's been amazing to, for, for us is that we see these products lighting up in 82 other countries where we don't even sell. We only sell and ship in Canada and the US. And thanks to eBay, uh, now nests are in 82 other countries around the world and people are lighting them up and asking us to come to their countries as soon as possible to bring our story to their, their communities. So what are you actually giving the consumer? Okay, it's, a, it's an actually beautiful design. I think it's right there some somewhere. Point, yes. <laughs> um, but What's, what are you saving in terms of money and in terms of power? What? Well, obviously, each person has a d different comfort habits, right? What do they like at their house? What, do they, um, what, what temperature do they want it to be when they're away? Maybe they have pets or what have you. But cumulatively, we've already, we've already unlocked basically 700 mil million kilowatt hours already saved from um, using nests in and just what, those 18 just months. Just for a little context, what does that mean? So what that means is, you know, we do all kinds of fun things, but it's literally, like we said, it's like taking a 747 back and forth to the moon like about 10 times. So literally all of this kind of energy is, is really being saved and people are still being comfortable. It's not that they're going and, and living in a cave. You can actually use a nest and save energy and actually be comfortable. That's kind of the, the, the weird thing here that, yeah, that people don't really understand. And, and, and we, we're really glad that uh, we're getting a tremendous traction with our customers out there. And they're actually selling them to their friends and giving them as gifts. We never understood there was going to be a gift economy around thermostats. Right? <laughs> That's really like great. the new fruitcake, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it's just being used. <laughs> so um, now, uh, in addition to having sort of reached out to all these consumers, you have just last week announced some partnerships with 
the energy companies themselves, right? Do you want to talk a little bit about that and, and how that works? Right. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So we last week decided that we were going to uh, announce our utility or energy provider services. It's always been a vision at Nest that we wanted not to just make a thermostat and make it comfortable, but to actually have an end-to-end -end system from the thermostat all the way to the, uh, to the energy provider and making sure we have a full feedback loop to understand not just behavioral patterns inside the home, but also understand energy prices and trying to tie that as a full feedback system. So uh, last week we announced our expanded partnership with uh, Energy and Reliant and Green Mountain, um, and we are turning on uh, really two important services. One is called Russia Rewards. People have uh, uh, heard of demand response, where literally you roll in a, a thermostat, and during certain peak periods, um, they'll turn off your access to your, your heating or cooling because they want to load shift that energy usage away from those peak times. Uh, we did something very, very different. What we said was we have a trusted brand with the consumer. Let's bring them a trusted service where we can actually do some load shift, make it personalized per home, but also allow the user to be in control. Because we believe that you get a, a, wide array, a, a wide array of people using these types of devices. You're going to get the maximum peak load shift, but not necessarily having to have the maximum load shift with every home and actually compromising. So, you, so I, as the user, can basically decide that I would like you know, the, the peak temperature to rise a little bit, let's say, while I'm taking the kids to school. And then, and, then, and then change it. I have the ability to control that with your... Exactly. So okay. what, what happens is in the Rush Hour Rewards case, you opt in to the service, and then during peak times, what we do, uh, and those only happen during weekdays, not weekends, we will give you a 24-hour notice that this peak energy period's coming, and just to give you a heads up, and then during that peak energy time, we slow, we might pre-cool your house before because you might be home during that time frame. We pre-cool the house. And then we modulate the, or turn on and off the thermostat to load shift away, but only gradually change your comfort level in your house. S just so slightly that in our results, in our trial uh, results, we're seeing uh, uh, blow away uh, uh, numbers that say people actually didn't feel this comfort shift at all. We've, we've, we've saved 40 or 50% peak load shift out of this time period, but people didn't experience it all in, in their comfort. And so, and so in terms of the actual ROI on these devices themselves, I mean, what, what can you, I know it depends on the person and obviously it depends on the cost, but what are people looking at? If you buy one of these devices, which is retailing at? It's what? at 249 and in many states there's a $100 rebate. Okay, so what are people, what's the average time it takes sort of to pay for itself? We've seen it, it, it depends really, again, on your comfort your level and, and your environment, your home and everything. We've seen it as long as 18 months. But now we've seen it as quick as, as six months, especially with the $100 rebate in different places. So we're, people are saving money, especially our early customers now. And these nests have paid for themselves, and they're paying, paying you back each month that they're in use. So anywhere between six and 18 months, depending on your use. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in terms of where the company is going, I mean, we've had a lot of discussion already today about how hard it is to pursue sustainable issues if, you're not, if you are a public company. Is, is that in your future? Have you thought about doing <laughs> well, that? Well, I, I, I was retired before before yes. before doing Nest, and my goal is to stay engaged and have a lot of fun at Nest, and you know, talk to us in ten years. But right now, I'm just having a ball with the team, you know, going after the marketplace, and um, I hope to be private as long as we possibly can. Uh huh. I guess you see your former employer is having some issues with the public market. Oh, well, everybody does sooner or later. So, uh, so I, I best keep that inside of our, our, uh, in our side of, on, on inside of our tent, and and literally um, see about uh, you know just making really really innovative products. I can't believe that we have such a great relationship with um, energy now. And we've only been in the marketplace 18 months. Most, most companies like ours are trialed to death. They never make, it to, never make it to the big time, so to speak. But with David Crane's leadership and, and what we've been doing together, I, you know, we are already turning on energy services directly to these, these, these thermostats. And I couldn't be happier in just 18 months. Where, how, how much of the country are you now available? In so we're in every state, um, and we're in every county, anywhere there's population. So this is not a green, uh, a blue state, red state kind of thing. We're all through Texas, we're all through California. Basically, wherever there's any, any population, there's a nest there. 
and now, you know, in 82 other countries we have to get to. And you really think that you can hold the advantage here? I mean, you have competitors. You know, you see the Apple pricing approach in a way. I mean, this is or will be at some point a commodity, right, as technology catches up. How do you anticipate being able to keep that pricing going? Well, I, you know... I, I mean, it's cool to buy a Nest, right? <laughs> I mean, and you have succeeded in doing that very, very effectively. Um, but, of course, to maintain the business, it has to continue to be cool. Well, absolutely. It always has to be cool, and we have to, we're talking directly to the consumer. And for us, we have to have a disruptive product, but we also have to have disruptive marketing. We have to get break through the barrier of complacency. So disruptive marketing is very important, and disruptive marketing is not cheap. No. So we have to, all of those things are baked into our costs. But again, look at the track record of our team. Our team started and we created a $399 iPod back in 2001. Today you can buy iPods for $49. We have the track record of understanding how to bring those prices down over time, bringing the volumes up, and staying profitable. So it's just a matter of time. You know, technology, uh, adoption, volumes get up. We'll be able to address more and more of the market. But what we did specifically was turn on instant rebates last week. So you get $100 right at any e-tailer or retailer for uh, Nest, and you can get it for $149. I think that makes it much more reachable for many, many people. Unlocking those dollars people paid into, you know, $7 billion of energy efficiency funds to get Nest into their home very quickly. I want to open it up to questions. We've got a couple of minutes. Anybody? It's kind of hard to see out here. Question? Oh. Okay, I've got a question. If not, oh, is there one? Okay. And please identify yourself. Hi, Brendan Ripp from Fortune. Uh, I put a nest in the house about six months ago, and we absolutely love the product. And, and while using it, uh, we also want to do more with it, like turn on and off the lights and do more energy efficient things in the house. Can you talk about product extensions and where you may go moving forward? So, so uh, great question. What are we going to do next? Right now, what we're doing next is the our energy provider services. That's a big piece of it. Um, we're also going into these you know, more countries very, very quickly. So we want to do more products and we want to do more, more services. The thing, if you, everyone remembers, uh, you know, it took seven years from the iPod to get to the iPhone. So I hope it's going to be shorter than that Nest. But of course, we're small and we're limited resources. We have to win, and we have to really win well here in, in North America, but all, all around the world before we can really expand out. But I hope to have some new things for, for our Nest customers uh, uh, be, beyond just new services, but new products sometime in the future. A lot of people have said lighting would be a natural extension. Is that something you're thinking about? Oh, lighting is very interesting, but lighting is not necessarily the biggest problem in the home. Right? The biggest problems in the home are heating and cooling, which is 50 to 60% of your uh, energy bill. After that, hot water, um, pools. A lot of people have pools and pool heaters and pool pumps. So there's other areas to go into that are more uh, you know, energy uh, users that I would like to address. LEDs and, and those things are great, and there's tons of innovation happening there. The reason why we got in the thermostat market was because there was no innovation happening. Mm -hmm. uh, so where else you know, is I don't want to no go necessarily now. where there's tons of, <laughs> tons of capital being deployed. Deployed. Right, makes sense. Other questions? Think back here. Hi, Brian Demain from Fortune. You didn't really explain how it actually works. I mean, sure. what, could, briefly, I mean, you know, how do you save that money? What, what, it tracks your behavior in some way. Could you just elaborate on that? Sure. So the Nest is, is a thermostat, first and foremost. But what's different about it besides it looks cool? Uh, there are quarter billion thermostats here in the, in the U.S. installed in residential and light commercial. Only 11% of those were ever programmed once to save any energy. Why? Because programming is hard. People can't understand what their, their, their vacation schedules are or their work schedules are. So what we do differently is all you have to do is use the product, turn it up or turn it down, either on the dial itself or through your a remote app on your, on your iPhone, your Android tablet, or your web browser. And we watch those, um, the thermostat itself watches those adjustments, and through that, over the first three or four days, understands your pattern. So you like it a certain temperature in the morning. You like it a certain temperature when you go to bed. You're at home certain times of the day. Other times you're not. Through all of our sensors and through all of our machine learning, we create a program for you. And now after 18 months, 99% of all of our thermostats actually have schedules that were learned, not programmed by the individuals, and they actually save energy. So through that, we have learning technology to learn your schedule and to save energy. 
And we also have other features like auto away. We, the sensor's built right into the device. We can detect when you're home or away. And when you're away, we'll automatically turn down to a energy saving temperature that you set. So you don't always have to go and turn on and off your thermostat even when you're not home. So these are some that we have many, many more features. Actually, today we had a new software release with three or four more new features that we just added to the product. It keeps getting better uh, with just software updates that happen um, remotely and, and independently. You don't have to do anything to get involved. But primarily, learning thermostat, it self-programs based on your habits, and it turns itself down when you're not around. And with that, I think we will move to the next phase of this discussion. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thanks, Tony.